Hey, root stones and bones folks and crafters of the curious and divine. I am making these delightful little herbal sachets tonight. They're quilted and they are pyramid shape. I'm putting a loop on the top so you could, I don't know, hang it somewhere if you want. Um, I usually just kind of scruff them up and enjoy their smell. Um, put them in your drawer with your clothes. Um, you could, hi, hey Lisa. Um, they're really, really fun to make and they're pretty quick to make a bunch. So I made these ones earlier and I haven't filled them yet. So I'm really excited to fill them too because I have a lot of um, herbs that I grew and some that are foraged and um, we can make little blends at the end. I'll show them off to you right now though, okay? We've got some beautiful sage. Um, these are going, this loose leaf is gonna be available in our shop shortly. We already have the sweet fern up and we also have our harmony bundles back, which just went live right now before this video. Um, so if you guys wanna get them with the most beautiful, it's sweet fern, pine, sage and cedar and they're adorned with rose and they're absolutely stunning so you guys are going to want to snatch those up anyway i've got some lemon eucalyptus over here um spearmint and another really great filler for these little sachets that we're going to be making tonight um you could if you like essential oils you could get flaxseed or rice even um and a few drops of oil and using a little funnel after, you know, put that in. Um, lots of things to do, so lots of options. So let's get started. Um, if you guys haven't joined our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group, you can find that obviously on Facebook and maybe Elisa can drop the link below so we could get some potential new crafters in there. We'd love to see what you do, what your craft is, um, what moves you. Anyway, I love sachets. I love smelling things. I love lavender. Ooh, I left the lavender in the other room. I'll have to grab that. I don't know why. Um, lavender is just a definite go-to with sachets. Um, this one's got like a cute Christmas feel to it. I don't know. You can make them for any season. And um, I have really fun ribbon. This one says blessings. Um, just get crazy with it. This is a great scrap buster, okay? So what you're going to do, here are a couple I have pre-cut and I keep all my scraps. I don't know about you guys, um, I keep everything because these are two inch squares, guys, and I have a whole, well, it's a small tote, okay? And, it, and it's full of scraps, so I cut them down to two inch squares and I have, you know, kind of a little, rainbow pile of them, a red pile, a yellow pile, orange, and I can just go through and put them together. So you're gonna need, ooh, my hands are shaky. I've been having some coffee tonight. Don't tell on me, I haven't had coffee in like a week. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, so you're gonna get eight for each sachet. So four of each fabric, so you want two different colors, two different patterns, um, and you're going to put them in a checkered position, and that's how you're going to sew them together. So I have two different ones right here that I'm gonna be making one with the brown and the orange, and one with the green, and I guess it's kind of like wheat or a straw kind of look. Um, and I'm gonna just chain stitch these together. Um, I also have a four inch ribbon for each. So eight two inch squares, four of each fabric. Um, you know, get fun with it. I Like I said, I did a really Christmassy one. I've got this other one that's got like a really cool leaf print with yellow. Um, I don't know what I did with my other ones. I have them scattered around so I can enjoy them when I'd like to. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your opposing colors, um, all eight of these pieces, and you're going to put one on top of the other. You can pin, you can clip. I happen to have pins. So you're gonna make little piles just like this. You can pin them 
or if you feel really savvy about sewing and you and you're fairly accurate um you won't need to pin them okay but i'm just gonna do this for you um so you can get a good idea and it's uh, it is more accurate if you pin um okay so for one sachet you're gonna have four of these little tiny squares i know it's crazy right pinned together opposite fabrics all right, and I'm just gonna quickly do this one too and say, how are you guys doing tonight? Drop me a hey. If you sew, I wanna know. Um, if you craft, I'd love to know what you're into. Um, I've been seeing some really amazing stuff in our group, the Crafters of the Curious and Divine group lately. It's, it's unbelievable in there. I'm telling you, there are so many talented people and um, I love that people are sharing what moves them and yeah what are you working on Elisa oh I know what she's been working on uh, we are making for the first year ever a Halloween box and there's only gonna be a very limited amount so you're gonna want to keep your eye out for them they are brilliant there she's making a crocheted skull doily it's absolutely gorgeous um, it comes with a calcite sphere a smoky quartz one of our beautiful sage bundles a really fun little skull scully fairy ornament um what else is in there mugwort um which we will also have available in shop soon but the halloween boxes are amazing so i think she's crocheting tonight probably right share what you're doing real quick as people pop on yeah hey guys i am making herbal sachets they are pyramid shaped and they are quilted. So they're an excellent scrap buster. Okay, so to make them, I will reiterate for one sachet, you need uh, eight two inch squares, four of each color, um, and, cause it's going to look checkered. As you can see, it's got a checkered look to it, which I really like. It makes them a little more fun and like I said, great scrap buster, okay? So I have already taken the eight of them and put them together into opposing little stacks and I'm gonna chain stitch these really quick, okay? Let's do it. And I'm using um, the edge of my presser foot as a seam allowance, so I'm gonna say I'm probably using a half inch seam allowance, which is very sufficient because you are going to be pressing these open. I don't know if you guys know what chain stitching is. It's just you're pushing one piece through. You're not clipping it. You're just continuously pushing the different pieces through. Okay, so going right, right down the line with all of them. As I get towards the end of one piece, I sneak the other piece into and underneath the presser foot and the machine's feet just pull it in and I'll show you my neat little banner I'm basically making out of these two inch squares. Um, so it's, this is great if you want to, a great project if you want to learn how to do more quilting, more um, piecing, uh, if you have limited space, if you don't have a lot of fabric, if you have um, a lot of scraps that you want to get rid of. These sachets are really, really fun. Um, they'd certainly brighten up someone's day if you want to cheer up your mom, send it to her in the mail, something like that. They'd make great little extras in a gift bag too. Okay, so that's my first run. Okay, and this is what chain piecing is. Okay, I just continuously kept pushing my two pieces together that were together, my opposites, because we're gonna make a che uh, checkered kind of thing for the piecing. Um, and it makes it much easier. I'm not clipping and clipping and clipping. Hi, Hallie. What are you working on tonight? Stocking stuffers, yes. Stocking stuffers, oh my God, we have to start thinking about that before Halloween. What are you doing to me, hmm? Or, uh, I guess they would be fun for Halloween too. I did not take my pins out as I went. 
because I'm chatting, I am also forgetting key pieces to this. So you're gonna wanna press these open with a nice hot iron and then you will match up the opposite fabrics. So, let's see if I can get this up here. I've got my iron right here, guys. I'm trying to be prepared for you. It's hot near the iron. Hi. What's up? Have you made sachets before, Hallie? I know you do a lot of sewing yourself. So I am just opening up that seam allowance on the back, giving it a nice press. If you like, you can press them to one side. Also, um, that tends to give a really good um, basis when you are matching up your fabric um, when you're doing opposite. So if I press them facing to one side, when I match them up, so I'm doing the checkered bit here, so I flip that over and check this out. My seam allowance is right here, is pressed this way. The one on the top is pressed that way. So it makes it really awesome to line those up. It leaves like a groove down that seam. And that is a really um, nifty trick I've learned to match up um, the squares. I think you'll see what I mean. I probably have an example of here this is not entirely matched up you see what i'm saying i mean i'm really picky okay but it's true you you can tell that you know the greens aren't touching and the reds not touching but this will ensure that okay so i'm pressing them one way i'm gonna pin that okay and you're gonna just continue along doing this um, we, oh, that's right. We have sachets in the Halloween box we're working on. They are much different. I wonder if I have one out and about. I do. I have one I could show you. These used to be up on our site. Um, this is a, another version of a sachet I make. I love the quilted ones. These are the ones we're doing right now. Um, but in the Halloween box, these are so fun. I don't think we have these print anymore. This is like a special one I kept for myself, but... These uh, cedar and in the lower price one, we're going to have lavender ones in the boxes. Look out for those. I can't wait. What else can I share? Elisa, could you share a link to our crafters group? I'd really love if some folks could join and share what they're doing. Oh, I've done this again. I'm talking to you guys. I'm totally forgetting about all my business here okay so when you press the seam allowance to one side you want to make sure you're pressing to the same fabric cut type okay in order for that trick to work that i just showed you so i am pressing my seam allowance my half inch seam allowance to this green side on both pieces so now when i flip them over to line them up in a checkered way so this is one, two, three, four, two inch squares of opposite color. And I've already sewed down one side and now we're making the checkered pattern. So with those pressed seam allowances, when I put the fabric right face to right face, they match up so perfectly. One seam allowance is going this way, the other is going the opposite way, and it just, it just fits perfectly. So that's a nice little quilter's tidbit if you didn't know. It took me a really long time to learn that little tidbit and it saves so much time as far as ironing goes. Um, splitting the seam allowance and ironing is such a pain. Who hates ironing? Hmm? The iron is pretty rough. Is my camera glitching? It might be because I have this heat going on right next to it. Perhaps I should face this the other way I get this done a little quicker okay one sec she says 
Okay, for those of you popping on, I see a few more people were making herbal sachets tonight. I have really exciting things to fill them with that we have grown in our gardens. Um, we also have some of those herbals listed up on our site right now. And I really love doing this because it's you, you can come up with so many different things. Elisa wanted me to try a lemon and what was it? Elisa, lemon and... Gosh, what did she say? Sage? She said lemon and sage is what she's really into. Okay, so again, we sewed the eight pieces together in groups of two. Now I have four pieces and now we're going to condense those again into two pieces. So we are checkering them. I have my seam allowances pressed both to the same color fabric on the back so when you fold them together opposite checkering they fit right down the middle right down the line you really don't have to match them up so hard yes lemon and sage it smells like heaven so I'm gonna make one of those tonight um, that's definitely inspired me that's right and she just dropped the link for our crafters group crafters of the curious and divine we got some really brilliant people in there, and I know that whoever's watching right now might have some brilliance to share of their own. And if you if you like me, if you know people who sew, who wildcraft, who are looking for fun little gift ideas, please share this video out. Um, and we do this monthly. Every month I have a new project that I make a tutorial up for free so you'll find this tutorial in the file section of the crafters and curious of the curious and divine group and um, it's totally worth it I've got a zipper pouch I've got unsponges in there um, we've we're just gonna keep working every single month on this all right so I have my pile of pieced together um, little checkers with my half inch seam allowance and again I'm just going to chain stitch because it makes it easy and this project's going to be a lot longer with me chatting it up the whole time okay and chain piecing you do not clip or anything you just grab your next piece and slide it under the foot and you zip it along this one's preventing, this cute little thing's preventing me from pushing my stuff through. So you can really use anything in your garden. If you guys are growing mint, if you find wild mint, dry it. It's really great for sachets. That's a very easy wild herb that you can find plentifully anywhere. I'm telling you that stuff grows like a weed. Um, I wonder if, I don't know if mugwort would be lovely, but there's some other good ones besides lavender. Sage, we were talking about. All those nice herbs. Um, lemon verbena was one of my favorites that I did. Okay, so there's my chain piecing again. Okay, so that's now four pieces, and now we're going to get to the fun stuff. <clears throat> Just gonna give them a little snip and I will show you, ta-da! So for each sachet, you will now have two little checkered pieces with four different squares. And I'm gonna press this again, press these so they're nice and easy to continue along. What I like about Pressing your seam allowance to one side as well is that the backs of your projects and of your squares that you're working on, and this goes for like all of your your piecing as far as quilting goes. Look how nice the back is when you press. It's all pressed down to one side. It's a really it's a really nice trick. It's a really nice finish. I know nobody sees that, but you know in your heart it works really good because look how that lined up. It's perfect. Okay, and it's gonna happen like that every single time for you if if you do it like that. It's I'm telling you, it's foolproof little quilter's trick. Okay, so we'll press the rest down. I'll show you the backs so I can brag to somebody about my cool trick, even if nobody likes it. 
right? Kind of looks like a little, I don't know, what's that? What's that symbol? All right, and here is the other one we're working on tonight. That is gonna have the little ribbon that says blessings. I love that ribbon. I've been using it very sparingly because I like it so much. I'm gonna be so sad when it's gone. Does anyone have, um, you must have a stash. If you're, if you're a crafter, you have a stash and you have things that you're afraid to use because you're like, I'm never gonna find it again. And I don't know if I could find this exact ribbon I love so much again. All right, so there you have it. Here's the second sachet. It's gonna, it lines up really nice. The back with your piecing um, and your seam allowance being pressed to the same side always. Um, you can kind of like pick right, left, but you need to look at what fabric <clears throat> you're pressing it towards, okay? So I'm working on two of these at the same time with you guys just to show you how quick they can be to put together and make, all right? I mean, we're almost halfway done. If you don't like the quilted look, cut out a square this big. How big is it for you guys? Uh, one, two, it's like three and a quarter. Three, I, you could go three and a half, okay? three and a half by three and a half, or you could pick any size you want and that would just make a bigger or a smaller pyramid if you're if you're into switching things up, all right? So, now I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you can kind of see my hands and these pieces here, okay? Two pieces. You wanna make sure that they are opposite when you are going to fold one onto the other, okay? And you're going to take <clears throat> your four inch piece of ribbon make sure you have your nice shiny side out fold it in half and don't do what I did the other night and put the loop on the outside that's supposed to go facing the inside and then you're picking your stitches and um, I think that's a big part of sewing too is picking your stitches um, I know Elise is like I don't have the patience for sewing that's my business partner I talk about Elisa a lot she's that beautiful girl sharing all that nice stuff um, down below, sharing our crafters group. I hope you join as well. Um, and she's just like, I don't have the patience for that. You know, there's too many, too many mess ups, too many technical issues. Your machine is finicky. And I'm like, yeah. And it doesn't get any easier as you go. <laughs> you know, you, you get better at troubleshooting and, but you just never stop learning um, new ways. Okay, so I want you to get a pin, I want you to fold your ribbon in half, and I like to do the, um, I like to put it on the opposite, but it really doesn't matter because I'm going to also place the same fabric over that. So to make sure it's checkered where you're going over. Okay, do you see that? I'm gonna make sure that it's, this one's brown and this corner is orange, all right? So you pick that corner, you put your little loop in. I like to leave out about a half inch or something just so I know where that corner is specifically. Um, and again, what's really great about the seam allowances being pressed to one side, they match up again, look at that. It's a brilliant thing. So they'll all just fit into place and you can really just feel how it fits. And you're going to sew along three sides and you'll be leaving one side open and that's going to be to make your little pyramids we're going to make this from two dimensional to three dimensional very shortly I saw a few more people pop on hey everybody we're making quilted herbal sachets tonight okay i've got a couple <clears throat> i've been working on they are comprised of eight different two inch squares and you sew them together. I used a half inch seam allowance. Um, so they are checkered four to a side. Then you take your ribbon, I'm gonna fold your ribbon in half. Isn't that lovely? This one says blessings on it, blessings. Uh, and you're going to face it down into the corner. I leave a little bit out. I probably won't leave as much out because I want you to read this. And you take, you make sure you're Opposite, so I have green here. I'm gonna make sure I have blue on top of that because again, you want it to have that great uh, 
quilted checkered look, okay? And I have some really fun um, herbs to fill it with, again, that I, I uh, foraged some of, like the sweet fern, and we have sage, lemon eucalyptus, um, and I'll give you some other hints of things we can use, okay? So again, I've pinned my loop that is going to be this part of your sachet, which, you know, you can hang it on something. Um, I mean, gosh, you could put it on a key ring and just enjoy the scent if you need a little extra relaxation during the day. They are small enough for that. They'd be great if you just tossed them in a really smelly gym bag or something, too. Uh, I just love how small they are, and their shape is really fun. I like three-dimensional things and pyramids, um, three-sided things I'm really into right now for some reason. Okay, so again, I'm matching up my seam allowances and I'm pinning the three sides, okay? So the, side, the sides you're going to sew, whoop, you're going to go up along this side over to the corner where your ribbon is and down. You're gonna leave the bottom open, okay? So I have two of these ready. Like I said, these are very, very easy, quick, wonderful scrap busters, all right? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and leave the bottom open. All right, I'm still using half inch seam allowance. Hi, Lisa, how are you doing tonight? What's everyone doing? Sunday, lounging, love to hear from you. Do you sew, do you craft, what's your thing? I wanna know. Okay, so I'm getting carried away here. Here we go. Up. First side, getting close to my corner. Lift my presser foot turn. Continue along. I'm doing two of these at once tonight, and I mean, really, if you want to make a bunch at once, you saw how previously, or if this is on replay, or you want to go back to see what I was doing up until now, um, better than the little bit that I shared vocally, um, you'll see that I did some chain stitching, which made it so easy to get a bunch done. Um, and it's a nice... It's a nice trick, and I did show a nice uh, seam allowance trick as well. If anybody's a quilter and or new to piecing um, any kind of quilting pattern, I have some great tips for you. So go back. Okay, we're going around one, two, three, and one, two, three edges. I'm leaving the bottom open. I can't believe I remember how to do this. I've been making these for years. I think these were one of the first projects I learned when I got my first machine. And I didn't have very much space and I didn't have very much fabric. In fact, I think my first ones were probably either upcycled from other things I cut apart, which is great. Um, and of course, a lot of hand-me-down fabric from friends, who I appreciate very much. All right, so I don't know if I can get a good angle with that so you can see that I have sewn up one, two, three sides and ooh, the bottom is open, okay? So to make this three-dimensional, I'm holding it flat, the bottom is open, pinch it the opposite way. All right. And your seam allowance, it's amazing. It's still pressed the correct way and it lines up lovely. But you are not going to sew across the whole thing. This is where you're gonna leave the opening to not only turn, but to fill your sachet. This is your end result coming very quickly around the corner here um, to fill with a funnel. If you don't have a funnel, get a piece of paper, roll it up. Um, I happen to have some kitchen funnels, so I like to leave, you don't need to leave a lot, maybe an inch and a half, uh, and you're going to hand stitch these, so I would suggest doing a ladder stitch, uh, because it's an invisible stitch. Anyway, I'm going to use a slightly larger seam allowance on this one, just slightly, and sew in a little bit to 
probably, I'd say halfway. Um, so I sewed halfway on this block and I will sew from halfway on this block to the edge. We're so close guys, I'm really excited. These are really fun and simple, so simple and so pretty and a great scrap buster. Okay, and you really should go around after you get these done. So you'll see it's like it's sort of puffy pyramid-esque and let me go over that part again with you, okay? Because I have the second piece. Here's the second one that I was working on. I went one, two, three sides sewn. So here we are, two-dimensional project with the open, <clears throat> the open bottom. Okay, so here we are, two-dimensional. To make it three-dimensional, open it up. You're gonna sew it this way, okay? See, it's got a little form to it now. And again, I'm gonna sew from each end into about halfway on these squares to leave the opening to turn and to fill with our herbs. Does anybody watching uh, love sachets? What's your favorite scent? What do you what do you love? What do you use? Do you use them? I I'm just obsessed with these little things. I love sewing them, and I must have I must have, I must be from like the Victorian era where all this was like truly pop popular and um, well sought after because I just can't get enough of sachets. I put them everywhere. I have these beautiful cedar ones that we'll be putting in our Halloween boxes. I have these all over my sewing room. Um, and you know, they dispel moths and they make everything smell beautiful. So no bugs want to be messing with my fabric stash. Did I do enough of a make sure that's correct I think I did a different... okay here we go so I got two of these ready I've sewn them so they have the three-dimensional look I'm gonna go around and trim my corners so you have nice crisp corners you know I like the word crisp if you've been watching me Jenny hey Jenny you love them in your Valentine's gifts, gifts for elderly homes. What a beautiful idea. And you know, you could go and get red and white fabric or pink and you know, flowered leftovers from the masks you're making. I know you're making them. I keep everything. I don't know if you just, did you just pop on Jenny? These, this is what we're making. These little herbal sachets. Um, they're very, very simple and they're super fun to make. Okay, so I am gently trimming my corners for nice crisp corners, and yes, crisp is the word for that for me. It must drive you nuts, Elisa, my like, always using these silly words. All right. She loves when I use the word program for TV shows. She thinks I'm like from another time. <laughs> why I call them programs they're just they're programs okay ba -ba -da -ba, drum roll okay we've got two of these ready to reveal I just love that Jenny that you that you do that for elderly people in nursing homes I think that's really awesome so I want to do that maybe I'll make a bunch of these for that reason the easiest way to turn these is to peek in hmm, find that ribbon that you sewed, hopefully, with the right way facing in, and simply whoop, pull the ribbon. And very shortly, my favorite tool, the chopstick. Who eats Chinese food? Me, who loves chopsticks? I do. Can you eat with Chinese food? Eat your Chinese food with chopsticks? I can, but I, I like to get them so I can keep them for my craft room. <laughs> Unusual tools. Anyone have an unusual tool that they favor? I'm telling you, chopsticks where it's at. Okay, so I'm just gonna stuff all that extra. I got some strings and thread rather that I did not clip, but nobody is gonna see that on the inside. 
making those nice crisp corners. That's what the chopstick is all about. Get all these fuzzies out. Ba -ba -da -ba. Here's the first reveal and we will fill them. And I'll show you what I'm filling them with after I turn the next one, if you guys want to see. That's a really fun one, sort of like Halloween-esque orange and brown checkered quilted little pyramid bag. Fun, right? Sachet. Okay, here we go. Where's my opening? There it is. Again, there's your opening. You have a little peek in there. Do, 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 do. There's your ribbon. Ah, oh, where is the ribbon? Maybe I should just feel for the ribbon instead of trying to look down this very tiny space. There it is. Okay, grab it. Here's the ribbon. Boop. And we're right side out. Grab your favorite poker tool. I mean, you could use a pen. You could use a, you know, I don't know. What else could you use? You know, all sorts of pointy stuff around here. But I like my chopstick. You love it. Hi. I like this one. I think this one's my favorite of the night. Oh my gosh. Uh, the one with the sort of, I don't know if it's wheat or grass. I'm just going to say grass. It's like a grass print fabric with this really beautiful um, green polka dot batik. And it has uh, the blessings. Oh, it came out good. It says blessings on the, on the top for the ribbon. So here is the other one we just whipped up. Boy, the loop is really big on this one. That's okay. Okay, so we have these two, and now it's time to fill them up. So get your funnel, and get your, let's pull these back so you can see what I'm working on. So here's some finished ones, and we'll give them all a little, Extra, you use a pencil, Elisa? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I got four of them, so we can... Okay, so we'll make Elisa's sage. And we'll do lemon eucalyptus. This lemon eucalyptus was gifted to me by a girlfriend from her plant. And it is... Oh, it's amazing. So I'm just gonna kinda break it up into this other glass. I don't, oh wow, I don't know how much I'm gonna need. So this is, I'm gonna do lemon, eucalyptus, and sage. Hopefully it breaks up enough to go through that funnel. And if not, guess what tool I'm using to push it through? Ha <laughs> ha chopstick. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's see how much of this I'm gonna wanna do. Alisa, which one should I put this in? Which little sachet? Christmas, hmm, I don't know if Christmas is lemon equal to a Halloween-esque looking one, yellow, or the fun grass one, you tell me. I'll pick the one you want, I'll fill it up. So I'm just sort of Grinding this up with my hand, you can use a mortar and pestle. If you have one, I left mine downstairs, so now I am improvising, okay? I am using, oh wow, Elisa, you're so right. Oh my God, sage and lemon eucalyptus. That was, she said sage and lemon is her favorite right now. And wow, that's like, it's potent and it's beautiful. The grass one, all right, it's going in the grass one. Sage and lemon eucalyptus. Sachet coming up, okay? I am not gonna ladder stitch these right now. Um, you can use a whip stitch if you're not a ladder stitch person, but I like a nice clean finish, which means I don't wanna see any hand stitches on these. And the ladder stitch is a hand stitch, but it is invisible. So look it up there. It's really simple. There's like little picture tutorials on like Pinterest and stuff, okay? Got my opening where I flipped my little sachet around. I'm gonna just boop, 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 pop my funnel in. And um, this is not breaking up like crazy. So I'm probably gonna end up pushing it in with that handy dandy tool of mine. 
Doesn't that work for everything I'm telling you? Chopstick. I love Chinese food for my crafting needs. Also upcycling tools if you think about it that way. But wow, lemon, eucalyptus, and sage. This is revolutionary. I don't know why I haven't, I do, uh, oops. I do lemon, oil, and eucalyptus combined a lot when I do floor wash, um, my own floor wash at home, obviously. I am at home right now, but you know what I mean. When I'm making a herbal floor wash, I tend to use that, but not sage generally. Let's see how stuffy puffy I can get this. Let's fill it to the gills, okay? Just shove it in. Are you saying I'm taking too long? Somebody's impatient. Okay, and it's great. I'm just gonna put a little pin on here so I can show you guys how nicely these stand up. Okay, so I just put a pin where my hole is, um, lining up my, um, my stitches, and that's where you're gonna either, you can whip stitch if you don't mind seeing a stitch, but I like the ladder stitch, which is invisible and you can look that up, but. So we filled this with lemon, eucalyptus, and sage. It's amazing, and here you go. When it's filled, they stand up really well, and when they stop smelling, just give them a little scruff, and you can continue, okay? What should our next one be filled with? How about spearmint? I might have to scoot to grab the lavender. I forgot the lavender in the other room. How about spearmint for the holiday looking one? Um, you can add all sorts of things. I have a whole cabinet of herbal stuff downstairs and these are the few things I just grabbed. Um, oh, I'm covering up what I'm doing. Just shove it in. Nope, she says. Okay, so here I am. This is spearmint from my herbal garden out back. I have a couple different varieties of mint. Um, this spearmint is very nice. It has really cool looking leaves. Um, very different than the regular mint I have. So I'm eyeballing how much to put into these sachets and this is the fun part. Go crazy, try new scents. I was talking before about using an alternative to just the herbs. Um, I have some flax seed here, and you could take some flax seed, get some essential oil that you love, and put a few drops in, give it a good mix, and boop, drop it in, um, and that would give it some weight, and you can add any combination. It's probably easier to find uh, any scent that you want in an oil than finding or foraging the herbs. So that's just a little tidbit, little tip for you guys. If you want something different, sorry, I'm pulling the stems out. I know this is like not the funnest thing to watch, but let's fill this one up, okay? So the first one we have, lemon, eucalyptus, and sage. Let's do this spearmint. I can run out, I have my lavender in a pouch in the other room if you guys want to admire the half together dress I have behind me. It's the exact matching one to my daughter's. If you guys are on our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group, you'll see um, that I have been making her some things as well. Okay, so we're filling this one up. We're almost there, I'm almost there. And again, let the recipes just take you away with what scents you want to use. Look how nice that lines up. Again, whip stitch. Um, you could run this through a machine if you really don't mind seeing stitches, but again, I'm pretty picky and I want to use an invisible stitch, so look up the ladder stitch. It's a great stitch to use. So this is the holiday one. It's filled with mint. Hi, Emily, how are you tonight? Great tip for people who may not have those herbs available. Yeah, and um, if you don't have flaxseed, I have a ton of flaxseed, but if you don't have flaxseed, use rice. Rice is awesome. Um, 
the flax seed just has it just has a different feel and a different weight to it um, and for I'm using them for herbal heating packs so they don't have like a scent like rice does when you heat rice up flax doesn't so I've been using that but we filled this little holiday sachet up with spearmint Ooh, that's really lovely guys okay what's next what do I have what do I have left who did I fill I filled those two Oh, that's right. I wanted to do some sweet fern. And we have sweet fern available on our website right now. Um, beautiful packaged dried leaf sweet fern. And if you have never smelt this, you need to. It's so soft and pungent. I, I don't know. There's not there's absolutely nothing like it. It's a very sacred herb and it's just, it has the best smell. I love it so much. I love it so much, I'm going to put it in the Halloween one. Well, I say Halloween because it's orange and brown, but I mean, whatever, whatever. Let's just dump it in. Now we're getting to it, Elisa. Okay, I put some sweet fern in this one. And then I think I've got to do lavender for the other one, so I've got to run really fast. You will not miss me very long. But that one is sweet fern. How fun is that? Wow. That It just has the most beautiful smell. So we have a bunch of that loose leaf sweet fern available, um, root stones and bones at Etsy. And how fun is that? And this, and they're really easy to fill. So easy to fill. Um, last one coming up. Here it is. Lavender. Pretty quick, huh? Look at that dash. I have it in this nice bag. I keep this... <clears throat> Amongst my where, where my chair is in the other room. Oh, I love lavender. Who else loves this beautiful plant? Okay, so these are the lavender petals, and they are definitely the go to for sachets, I think. I think most people, when they think of a sachet, they think of lavender. Um, because lavender has been the most popular scent um, for those kind of things. I learned about tussie mussies recently. Does anyone know what a tussie mussy is? I forget what I was looking up that I found this. Oh, I think it was when I was researching our lavender uh, weaving. We, we do lavender weaving. We did baskets. We have some lavender wands available on our site as well. And I was looking up um, information, historical information that's from the Victoria era, um, and they also used tussie mussies. So it's a just a, a bunch of dried herbal. It's like a bouquet, but they called it a tussie mussy because when you walked around in the cities back then, it was nasty because everybody just tossed their their poo and loo and all that stuff right onto the street where the horses and all the rest of your animals would be doing the deeds in the street there. Not that deed, but you know, their their business rather. And they had herbal packs to smell. They just walked around with this little herbal bunch um, or a sachet. But the little bouquets probably looked a lot prettier. Um, there you have it, lavender. So as you can see, you love that. I know it's really interesting to what the lore is behind all of these these little herbal things. Herbal things especially because obviously the, this plant medicine has been here forever and they're not new and they have been used this way for hundreds of years. So beyond the Victoria era, before rather, I'm sure people used bunches of, you know, smelly, delicious herbs for all sorts of reasons. Um, so there are our finished quilted pyramid sachets with a little hanging loop. This one we put lavender in. This one we did sweet fern, my favorite. We did spearmint in this one. 
and my new favorite combo and the little blessings bag that's what it says on the on the little loop there lemon eucalyptus and sage so lemon and sage is definitely my new favorite combination unbelievable you have a small note card that has an image of a tussy mussy painted on it you love it oh my gosh would you sit, share that with us sarah i would love to see um a legitimate tussy mussy like i said i just learned about it on the internet when i was researching the lore behind the um lavender weaving so i would really love to see that hey alex nice to see you on look at these cute little things i just made aren't they fun so herbal pyramid quilted sachets um if you don't have um herbs available to you like i said use rice or use flaxseed flaxseed is beautiful you can get that at the store okay and then you'll take whatever combination of the oil you love and go boop 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 however many drops to your pleasure and pop it in with your handy dandy tool and then you're gonna I'm gonna ladder stitch these clothes I'm not gonna do that with you guys because it's not that fun to watch okay but look up what a ladder stitch is if you want to know um, I didn't make these specifically to put on each finger but because I can I'm going to and I will bid you all farewell I'm gonna put this sewing tutorial up on crafters of the curious divine group Elisa dropped the link below so if you want to join and get the free um, it's a PDF tutorial you can download it um, I just ask that you don't share it out use it for yourself okay and I'd love to see if you make these because they can be whatever you want and I'm sure they'll be beautiful. So what is it? this project is doable for you. Really? Great. And like I said, if you don't wanna do the quilting part, which I find really fun, and if you wanna learn um, quilting uh, or piecing, this is a great little starter thing. It's super fast and simple. Um, but join our crafters group if you want the tutorial. And we've got other great tutorials that are up right now. And um, definitely check out uh, Rootstones and Bones at Etsy.com because we have new face masks up. We have a lot of these herbal um, loose leaf uh, products that we have bagged and have available for you guys. And I have the Harmony bundles up, which are gorgeous. It's worth just checking the website out um, at Etsy to see those. And we also have a bunch of Halloween face masks. So you're gonna wanna get those before they're all snagged up. I have some spiderweb ones and um, I actually have one I can show off that I was working on. Here's the other sister to the Dan Morris fabric. They're really fun. They're little bottles that say werewolf blood and invisibility, dried salamander eyes, kraken oil. Um, and they have a really nice surged edge the the there's only one of them available they're really cool i was feeling really spiffy one night so um get it while it's hot i will see you guys next month for our next project we're gonna be probably heading into a halloween project i'm thinking maybe tarot cases i would like to share with you guys or possibly the really fun little um candy corn wristlets i did so Every month we've got a new tutorial for you guys. We've got a PDF for free in our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group. And most of the time we are offering what I share live that I make with you on our website. If you don't sew and you really like these, um, maybe we'll put a few up, okay? All right, I love you guys. Thanks for sitting with me. Share me out if you like me. Follow our Rootstones and Bones page. And we do all sorts of gardening, wild crafting, sewing. We're into it all. We have a lot of fun. So come hang out with us more. Have a great night. Ooh. Say goodnight.